So this is the first of hopefully, hopefully, a weekly radio show, podcast and live stream all about the history of Stoke-on-Trent. So what I'm hoping to do is explore the history and secrets of Staffordshire and Stoke, but make it more accessible to everybody. So not just make it on the blog, and the blog is available to everybody. It's the red-haired Stokey. Go ahead and have a look at it if you want to. There's lots and lots of information on there. But some things need to be explored and talked about, and some things need to be videoed. So what I'm doing with this radio show is just making it more accessible for everybody, really. So what I'm going to do, we I like to explore places. I like to go through the archives. And I just thought I'd share my findings with you guys. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to talk a little bit today about tunnels. So you can't walk anywhere in Staffordshire without there being a rumour of a tunnel or some kind of secret passageway underneath us. So whether you're in a town or a village or even in the city of Stoke-on-Trent, there's always something underneath our feet. We are a mining city here in Stoke. And to be fair, all over Staffordshire is full of mines and tunnels. Or it could be a concealed tunnel used to escape an invading king or, you know, there's lots of rumours about monasteries and escaping monks. Whether they're true or not is a different story, but I think it's worth investigating. So whatever type of secret underground hidey hole it is, we've got plenty of them. You've just got to find them. And we have. So I'm going to tell you about, about a few of them. And I'm going to intersperse it with a little bit of music so it's not too boring for everybody. And then once the show's over, you'll be able to head over to my blog, which is the Red Aired Stokey, and have a look at some of the photographs and some of the videos of these tunnels that have been and explored. And if you follow me, subscribe, sign up to the newsletter, then any more that I find, I will keep you up to date with. So uh, I'm going to start with tunnels underneath Holton Abbey. So I actually grew up on Abbey Holton. And it did give me a clear advantage because I've actually been inside one of these tunnels when I was a kid. So I knew it was there. I just had to find it again. And obviously when you're in something when you're eight years old, you can't quite remember the exact location of it. But I knew it was there. So a little bit of backstory to Holton Abbey. It was built in the 13th century and it was quite a poor abbey. It got one of the lowest incomes of all the religious houses in Staffordshire. And like the rest of the abbeys in the UK, it was dissolved by Henry VIII and everything was sold and it was, you know, ruined. But after it fell into ruin and up to like the 19th century, it was used for farming. So Abbey Holton was a farming area. And then in 1884, where a bit of work was being done for drainage to a farm, and they accidentally found the foundations of the abbey so the council dug it up and discovered it and you know sorted sorted it all out and cleaned all the area up and the ruins are now accessible to the public and are on display and although they are a scheduled monument it's actually on the heritage at risk register because the weathering the decaying and just the, the site of it's pretty poor but I always thought growing up that these tunnels were part of the monastery, that they got something to do with, you know, something to do with the monastery. There's always tunnels, tunnel talk about monks running from the king and, you know, religious persecution and things. But it actually turned out to be a lot closer to home than that. So as you go on to the car park for Holton Abbey, it's it's not easy to see that there used to be a school there so they actually built calm outside school on top of the abbey near enough and during world war ii they actually built underground bunkers for the kids to hide in during the war during the air raids with it being so close to quite a lot of munitions factory and things that were on red hills road up to birch's head the area was targeted quite a lot so it was quite important to get the kids to safety and this is actually what this tunnel was 
What I didn't realise when I went looking for it is that it was still there and it's still open. So as you go onto the car park, if you look just slightly to the right as you enter the car park, you'll see like a concrete square. And that concrete square has an open top and a ladder down into it. And again, you'll be able to see the photos on my blog um, after the show. So make sure you go and have a look at that. As you head down into the tunnel, you see that it's still there. It's still arched and it's still exactly how it was. So what we found when we went down into it is it's, it only goes so far and it's a bit of a dead end. But what you'll notice is that it's a lot easier to access than it is to get out because the ladder's broken. And there is more than one of them. And what you'll find is that as you go along, each one is blocked up. It's just this one that's open for some reason, but there has been a collapse at the other end. So there isn't really anything left in them. There's not really anything substantial, but you can tell that they're an air raid shelter. And I just don't know what's going to happen to them in the future. I don't know if they're going to be used for anything or if they're going to be filled in. It just seems strange that after the school was demolished in the 80s, that they capped the shelters, but they never got rid of them. So who knows? So what we're going to talk about next is Draycott Cross Colliery in Cheadle. So if you've ever been to Draycott Cross, it's not far outside Cheadle. It's only... I mean, I would say it's a little village, but it's not really. There's not really much there but farms now. So it's kind of difficult to imagine that there was ever any industrial structures there at all. It's just a modest, unassuming little area of the countryside. However, underneath you lost in the undergrowth is the tunnel of Draycott Cross. So there was a lot of open cast mines here over the years because back in the day, anybody could own a bit of land and dig a mine and, you know, dig coal or iron or whatever it was that they wanted. But they actually found here that it was rich. So it started on an industrial scale. However, once it became huge, it wasn't actually open for that long because it was prone to collapse. Um, they strengthened it with steel loops. They tried everything to make it as as strong as they could but it just didn't work it kept collapsing so in the 30s they created a diversion that went around Huntley Wood and the tunnel was left untouched um and to be fair the whole place shut in the 90s I think it was 1991 and it was all sealed each area out of the tunnel was sealed however they didn't seal it very well so many, many people have been in since then, and you can still see the coal tubs. Um, the haulage system is still there. And you can, if you go in far enough, you can see that it's collapsed at one end and it's flooded at one end. Um, part of it's collapsed, part of it's flooded. And today it's just a concrete wall with a little hole in the top. So if you're brave enough, or stupid enough, depends which way you look at it, you can climb in through the hole and explore the whole place. I wouldn't recommend it, it's not safe but you can and as you head down you can see it's pretty much been left as it was when it was sealed and again I will put the photos on my blog um, at the end of the show so you can see but I think so many people drive past this because as you go from Draycott from Draycott Old Road up to Cheadle it's actually just in a field on the right hand side where the old train line used to be and I think unless you actually know it's there or you've looked for it or you've looked for a map, no one knows it's there. And it's just sat there doing absolutely nothing. And I find it absolutely bizarre that it's just there, open. Everything's still in there, just left as it was. A whole mining history just available for the taking. And it's a good job that they sealed up the end with concrete, really, because... I feel like there'd be more and more people getting in there and it, it really isn't safe. But if you just search for it online, you can see that many, many people have been in and been right to the end. And there's some absolutely fantastic videos on YouTube that you can look at of people exploring this tunnel. And 
explaining all of the history and all the signs are still on the wall. All the coal tubs are still in there on the railway and stuff. It's absolutely amazing. Um, so, yeah. Now, before I play another song, I'm just going to quickly talk about a tunnel that's underneath Stoke Station. Now, this isn't one that I've personally been in, though I am trying to personally get in it. <laughs> so, um, I mean, not all of the tunnels in Staffordshire and Stoke are ancient and underneath castles and ruins and they're not all industrial and things. But underneath Stoke Station, there's actually a web of stone vaults and a sentinel photographer did go down a couple of years ago you can find the pictures online and they're accessed through a doorway at the end of the footbridge on the platform and these stone vaults actually run the length and breadth of the platform so the the tunnel actually used to come out into the old goods yard you know where they're doing the work now and they're regenerating it it's completely brick built it's absolutely beautiful and although it's completely abandoned now, it did used to be offices for the North Staffordshire Railway Company. And if you look at the photographs, you can actually see that it used to be used for things. And now I think they should use it to run like cables and things through. It's not really used for anything interesting. Um, but yeah, I think I would like to see more of these tunnels underneath Stoke Station. I feel like it'd be nice to get down there and make a video and really explore them and maybe find out a little bit more history. I feel like if it was an office back in the day and it was offices, there must be some photographs from down there. There must be something, but I can't find anything online and I'm pretty good at finding these things. <laughs> so if anybody knows anything or anybody knows anybody that used to work in these offices or has been down into these tunnels underneath Stoke Station, please, please let me know because I would absolutely love to speak to them. Um, and yeah, I'd love to get down there and, and do a video because the only photos I can find of this tunnel underneath Stoke Station were taken by the Sentinel photographer, I think it was a couple of years ago. And now I, I would love to get down there and photograph it myself and find out a bit more about it. But what I'm going to talk about now is the tunnels that are underneath St Edward's Church in Leek. Now, there's always been rumours about tunnels underneath churches. You know, people have said that they go from the church to the abbey in Leek, which is impossible. People talk about them going, being hidey holes for priests. But this tunnel makes no sense. Like, it makes no sense at all. So, when a new central heating system was being installed underneath the church, an entrance was discovered to a mysterious tunnel. Now, this tunnel isn't in the undercroft of the church. It's actually below that so a good couple of stories underneath the church so if you imagine you've got the church and the altar and everything like that and then underneath that you've got like the undercroft and the vaults this is underneath that and then again so no one seems to know what they're for when they were built who dug them there seems to be no record of it at all and the tunnel is made of various types of rock so there's different sections of the tunnel were dug and built in different eras from house brick right to being dug into the bedrock. And if you have a look on the website afterwards, I will put pictures up and you can see what I'm talking about. There's, there's stone archways that don't lead anywhere. There's steps. There's when you go down into the tunnel, actually, I have put a video about this on TikTok, which I've put in my blog post that you'll be able to see. So you go into the undercroft and then you go down a ladder into a hole. And as you go down the ladder, it takes you into like a sandstone pit. And when you stood in the sandstone pit, this has been hand dug, you can tell, by the marks on the wall. So this bit's pretty old. But then, strangely, you have to climb back up out of the sandstone pit into the tunnel and then once you're in the tunnel it goes sort of up and round and there's a circular bit that's made of brick there's an archway made of stone that doesn't lead anywhere the steps that used to come out under the altar but the altar's there now and that was in a later addition to the church so this tunnel was obviously from before when the altar was added to the church and it's just real higgledy-piggledy 
Some people have said it's a tunnel for escaping. It doesn't go anywhere. It used to go outside the church, but I can't see what point that, what really that would do. And then some people were like, oh, it was a hidey hole for priests. Yeah, but if it was a hidey hole for priests, why is there archways, like quite ornate or archways, made out of hand-chiseled stone? Why are the actual steps? Surely if you were trying to hide a priest, you'd just dig a hole quick and put a board over the top of them so no one found them. It just doesn't make any sense. And the church, the steps that were at the end of the tunnel are circular and the wall is circular and made of brick. So a lot of work's gone into it. And you've got to remember that this is built underneath the church, underneath the entire church. And then just sealed up and forgotten about. It just doesn't make any sense to me. Now, in terms of the age, we didn't really know, we couldn't really figure, I couldn't figure out, and I can't find any record of the age of these tunnels, but there is some graffiti on the wall that's like hand engraved into the, the stone. And it's got the names W. Birch, J. Morris and H. Hillier, and the date 1720. So we know that it's from then at least, which is pretty old. But again, we just can't figure out what it's for. No one can figure out what it's for. It's such, I can't explain to you what a mishmash it is. So I'd, it would make more sense if you go and look at the photos and, and watch the video of what a higgledy piggledy sort of little place it is. But it's very easy to forget when you're watching it and when you're looking at the pictures, how deep this is, how far underground it is, because it just doesn't make any sense. I mean, Leek's a very, very old town, village really. And before the church was there, people have said that the the sort of sandstone outcrop that it was it's built on was a religious area anyway, back in pagan times, you know, before Christianity came along. So I think the only thing that makes any semblance of sense really is that this was some kind of pre-christian worship area and it just kind of got built on from there and then they decided that because it was an area of religious interest anyway that's why they built the church there but will we ever know probably not probably not it's just one of those things and I've posted in many Facebook groups, I've asked many people, I've spoken to archaeologists, I've spoken to geologists at the university. No one's got any answers. The people at the church don't know. There's no record of it. So we might never know. But if anybody watching or listening or reading has got any ideas, I would genuinely, genuinely love to hear from you because I'm stumped. It's fascinating. I love it. And it was obviously made for a reason, and it was ob it obviously did something because there's so many different aspects of the tunnel. And again, you'll see on the video, it goes up and down and round. It's fascinating. No idea what it was for. <laughs> no idea what it was for at all. So what I'm going to talk about now is a tunnel that's been hidden for quite a few years underneath Malcolm. Now, I don't think many people knew about this. Um, because Malcop's more famous for its castle, this little folly that sits on top of the hill. On, and, you know, everybody in Staffordshire and Cheshire knows Malcop Castle, don't they? Let's be honest, you can't miss it. It's the, probably the highest point in Cheshire, isn't it? Let's be honest. But what we're doing is, instead of looking up at the castle, we're looking down in the village, underneath the village, into what used to be an old mining tunnel, but not a mine, interestingly. So this was actually a tramway and it was built in the 1820s to transport coal from the mines nearby down the hill to the canal at the bottom. And it was an early example of a self-acting incline. And what that means is that the wagons would descend the slope under the weight. So you'd fill a, a wagon with coal, send it down the hill, it'd be attached to a rope and then it'd pull up the empty wagon using gravity, basically. And it was in operation, this tramway, until about the early 20th century. And then the tunnel was just forgotten about, completely forgotten about. One end of it was in a field, and it still is in a field, and the other end was in the village. 
the end in the village is completely sealed up now, but there are old photographs of it. Um, and then in the 1960s, it was rediscovered by local cavers who'd heard a rumour of the tunnel still being there and were exploring the area. So they actually found the entrance to the tunnel in this field, but it had been bricked up. So they removed the bricks, the rocks that were in place, and managed to enter the tunnel. It is full of water because it's underneath a field, but it was relatively unchanged since the 1800s. And it's still even got the wooden sleepers and the tracks in there. And the field is on private land, but even though it's on private land, quite a few people have been in since and recorded the tunnel. And I do go into more detail on this. I wrote an entire blog post about this um, and the history of the tunnel and a lot of photographs of it. But a friend of mine has got a YouTube channel and it's called Dean Explores. You've probably seen him on Facebook or things like that. He likes to go into tunnels and things. So he actually went into this tunnel and went from one end to the other and videoed the entire thing. So head over to YouTube when this is finished or head over to my blog because his videos on the blog and have a look. It's Dean Explores. And I'm, the video is amazing because he shows every single little detail of this tunnel. Like part way down, for example, is a big circular part of the tunnel. And while many people couldn't figure out what this was for, what I discovered is it was actually for turning the horses. And it needed to be such a big circle because it was actually, they used Clydesdale horses. Um, so Clydesdales, for people that don't know horses, are slightly smaller than a Shire, a bit smaller, a bit sportier. And they used to use that as a turning circle and it needed to be big because the Clydesdales are big. And interestingly, these Clydesdales were all locally bred in Malkop, which I think is fantastic. It's a shame we don't work locally like that anymore. So yeah, the tunnel is still there to this day. It's not safe. It is flooded. It does still have quite a lot of stuff in there. And again, it's just another piece of history that's just sitting there hidden until someone comes along to discover it. Um, so yeah, if you want to head over to my blog, there are photos and videos of this tunnel again. But the next thing that we're going to talk about is an area that seems to have quite a lot of tunnels underneath it for such a small area. And this is underneath the village of Alton. So heading out of Stoke-on-Trent, we head to Alton, better known for Alton Towers. Now it's a very old village and it's got a castle that dates back to the 12th century. Now I don't mean Alton Towers castle and I don't mean the castle that's on the hill when you go in. I mean the ruins in the ground of the current castle date back to the 12th century. And next to this church, uh, next to this castle is a church, St. Peter's Church, which also dates from the 12th century, or parts of it do. And it's underneath this church that one of the tunnels lie. Now, I don't know if the tunnels are accessible from the church because I haven't actually investigated that far. But from the outside, they dug straight into the cliffside, because as you know, the church is right up on top of the, the cliff. Um, and they dig underneath the church. Now, if you go into the churchyard, there's two old stone toilets in the churchyard, off to the side, hanging off the cliff edge. Bit of a scary place to have a wee, but you know, whatever floats your boat. And then when you go down to these toilets, the tunnel in is literally next to these toilets in the wall. Now, the only thing that I can tell you about this tunnel is that I'm not sure where it goes and it's absolutely full of spiders. So we didn't investigate all the way through because I'm not joking when I say it was full of spiders. I mean, it was full of spiders. I'm not scared of spiders, but I also don't want to be invited to a spider orgy. So, you know, it was a little bit much. We will go back at some point, but you know. And again, there's no record of this tunnel or what it was for, but it is one that I'm currently investigating. So make sure to drop me a follow or subscribe or sign up for the newsletter because any updates, I will share them. Now, that's just one tunnel in Alton. There's a couple more. One is under the Malt House. Um, not quite so much a tunnel. These huge underground areas were actually the granary, the underground malt kiln, and the cellars to the Malt House. 
and they are open occasionally to the public so you can actually go into tours of them but as you drive through Alton you can see the entrance to them because it's like a big huge archway and another doorway next to it and they've got metal door like metal gates on so you can see into them um, now, luckily, these were reopened and restored thanks to a grant from English Heritage after about 300 years. Um, so, you know, there is hope for other tunnels yet, because this is such a great example of a malt house and, and the working cellars that it needed to be rescued. So, again, there's photos of that on my blog. It's hard to describe just how incredible this is, but if you go onto the blog, when this show's finished, you'll be able to see the photo a photograph of in there. And if you go onto the website or check the Malt House in Elton on Facebook, keep an eye out because they do heritage days, they do guided tours where you can actually go down into the cellar and they'll tell you what it was all about, which is fantastic. Obviously, we went on it. And then there is one more tunnel that we definitely know about in Alton, and this is accessed from New Road. And as you go up New Road, there's a building on the left-hand side that used to be Lord Shrewsbury, or the Wild Duck, depending on how old you are. And this entrance to the tunnel is still there. I've put a couple of pictures on the blog. And unfortunately, this tunnel doesn't actually go anywhere now because when the driveway was being laid to this building, a steamroller actually fell in. <laughs> and this was within living memory. So when the steamroller fell in, they obviously had to repair um they had to repair the tunnel and make it safe so they had to fill it in but you can get so far in it but what we don't know is what the other side what is the other side now a lot of people have said that the tunnel did link to other tunnels beneath the white house and the bull's head pub in the village but i've yet to find these um so if anybody has any info or access to these tunnels please do contact me you know, if you live in the White House and or you run the Bull's Head in Alton and you're listening to this, then please contact me because I would love to see the tunnels underneath your house or underneath your pub. <laughs> um, but yeah, it's it's another one where we just don't know what these tunnels were for. They're not little tunnels. They're quite big, ornate tunnels with nice stone, hand-carved stone. They're quite old as well. Will we ever know what they were for? Probably not. Will I ever stop trying to find out? Probably not. But yeah, we just like exploring them and, and it's one of them things. So now I'm just going to talk to you a little bit about a tunnel that's underneath Campbell Place in Stoke. Now I've heard rumours of this and I, we know it was there because there's loads of photographs of it. It was the canal tunnel. Um, it was constructed in the early 19th century as part of the Newcastle Underline Canal that connected um, basically where the A500 is now, you know, when you drive over from um, Stoke Station into Stoke. And it was used to transport, you know, coal, pottery, industrial materials. But the canal was pretty short lived and it was filled in eventually. However, they didn't fill the tunnel in. Nobody's quite sure why they didn't fill the tunnel in, but we know for a fact that they didn't fill the tunnel in because during World War II, it was repurposed as an air raid shelter. Now, I wasn't quite sure about this, so I went into the newspaper archives and did quite a bit of research on it and found that it, they genuinely did turn this into an air raid shelter. It was equipped with bunk beds, benches, a ventilation system, um, and it was used throughout the war. And there's quite a lot of people in Stoke who can remember sheltering in this air raid shelter. So it was definitely a thing. It was definitely an air raid shelter. But after the war, it again became abandoned. Um, but in the 70s, there is a record of um, a, a local caver who actually managed to explore the tunnel. and documented its features i can't find any details about this it was just a little snippet that i found online that someone in the 70s had been into this tunnel um now there, there's also been discussions about restoring the tunnel but nothing ever came to fruition now it's not open to the public you can't access it we can't figure out how to get into it but 
What we do know is that the tunnel was recently damaged by contractors who were adding a new electricity supply to the Majestic Chambers, which is on Campbell Road. So we know that the tunnel's still there and can be accessed because they had to go in and secure the tunnel. Because obviously it's underneath the road, it's underneath the buildings. I don't know why they never filled it in. And I am trying to find out how we can get access into the tunnel to document it because there isn't a single photograph of inside of this tunnel. Not a single one. The old Victorian photographs before the tunnel was filled in are all above ground. You can see the entrance to the tunnel. It used to come out behind the buildings a bit further over by King's Hall. Um, and you can actually see today there's a hump in Campbell Place on Church Street. And next time you go around the one-way system, just glance to the right. If you look at Weatherspoons, to the right-hand side, you'll see a hump in the road. If you ever catch the bus that way, the bus sort of goes over the hump and down Church Street, um, that's the tunnel. It's still underneath there. And it's obviously quite a large tunnel because of how big the hump in the road is. Um, I have done an entire blog post on this tunnel and the, the, the canal that ran along London Road. So if you do want to learn a bit more about it, you can head over to the blog after this, the Red Haired Stokey, and check it out and read about it. But yeah, if, if anybody's listening, um, that has any memories of this tunnel, has any, God, if anybody has any photographs, I think I'd cry. But if anybody's got any memories or any information about it, I would genuinely, genuinely love to know. I really would love to know because it's it's definitely there. And I can't find anybody who has access to it, as try as I might. And I would absolutely love to, even if I can't get access to it, if they won't let me to go down it, even if they would go down and take my camera, I would really love it because I, th I genuinely think it needs restoring and I think it needs recording, if nothing else, just because it's history and it's it's hidden under there. So I've saved, I think, the best for last because the leopard in Burslem is probably one of the most famous pubs in Staffordshire. And it was before it burned down, to be fair. It was an icon. Um, but unfortunately, it did burn down in January last year. And unfortunately, again, is sitting in a sorry, blackened, half-demolished state. So for anybody that doesn't know about the tunnels underneath the leopard, back in the early noughties, um, the landlord, the then landlord, Neil Crisp, opened up the hotel at the back that they didn't realise belong to the pub and at the back they found all these rooms that were still how they were left in like the early 1900s so when um sharon took over the leopard we were invited to go and photograph it so i went up photographed all the rooms absolutely amazing um still got all the beautiful wallpaper on the walls still got all the um fireplaces in still got the original toilets with the toilet paper it was absolutely incredible but what neil also found when he opened this up was the tunnels underneath now again i know i keep banging on about my blog post but it's kind of hard to describe things when you could just look at a picture so the blog post is available on my website and it's weird it's um the red-haired stokey so if you go on there afterwards you can have a look but he actually marked out on the walls where the tunnels were, how deep they went, how far they went, that sort of thing. Um, but unfortunately, these tunnels were never opened. But it did start um, a lot of people researching and trying to discover what the tunnels were for or where they went. Now, it seems that one of the tunnels went to the old Norris Brewery across the road, which stood used to stand where Ceramica stood. Um, and then another one of the tunnels seemed to go to the town hall, into the basement. Now, I did have the pleasure of being allowed into the basement of the town hall to view this. Um, and I also went up onto the roof when the scaffolding was up on there, and on the leopard, actually, but that's a story for another day. So... We know that these tunnels were there 
we're not sure what they were for. I don't know why it was easier to build a tunnel under the road than it was to just roll the beer across the road. So it doesn't make any sense. Um, unless it was for tax purposes, not sure. But it's just one of their mysteries. However, there may be a way to solve it. It's a sad way, but there may be a way to solve it. And in the way that, in the state that the leopard's in at the moment, they might have to demolish it. I can't really see how they would save it, especially not the hotel part at the back. I feel like they could restore the facade at the front. But if they do demolish it and they do build something else there, which they will, they're going to have to dig down to the foundations. And we may be able to finally solve an age old Burzel mystery as to what these tunnels are and where they go. Because if they were never filled in, they're still going to be there. And if the builders are there and they've got all the hard hats and the safety stuff on, then they can go in the tunnels and find out where they go. So, yeah, we might be able to solve that mystery in Burzlan. It's just a shame that we have to sacrifice one of Burzlan's oldest and most iconic buildings in the process. So, so yeah, that's it, guys. We're out of time today, so thank you for joining me. I hope you enjoyed it. You can head over to my blog, which is the Red Aired Stokey, and sign up for the newsletter, and then you'll get any articles that I write. You can head over to YouTube, watch the videos, subscribe, you'll see anything there. And I'm going to be doing this show every week, and then if you do miss it one week, I'm going to be releasing it as a podcast. But yeah, thanks for joining. If anybody's got any comments or any topics that they would like me to cover, please contact me, because I would love to hear from you. And then yeah, that's pretty much it for today. I'll put some more music on, leave you all in peace, and thank you very much for joining me. And I'll see you again next time. Thank you.